Velkommen til podcast en Øl og Mennesker fra Beer Stories. Beer Stories er normalt en YouTube-kanal med ølhistorier og instruktionsfilm til hjemmebryggere, men mange af de interviews, jeg laver, er rigtig gode til podcastformat, og du finder dem alle sammen lige her. Hi Alex, can you tell me something about uh, Bicycle Brewery? Ja, det var også. Yes, uh, we are a, a small uh, brew pub uh, and brewery here in uh, Østerbog. Uh, we got started about three years ago, uh, June 2018, we opened uh, to the public, uh, but we'd actually been brewing here a little bit longer than that, uh, sort of working with the equipment and doing some private events. Yeah, okay. So what's the story with Bicycle Brewing? How did you start? And we, uh, it's actually, I guess in a way, it's a, it's a long story, at least goes a lot back into the past, but I, uh, I made my first beer, you know, with a home brewing kit uh, in a kitchen in San Francisco in 1999. Yeah. And I guess, uh, I, I mean, I was amazed that you could do that and, yeah. and got really into it and sort of shared that with my uh, you know, my friends, my family, and just kept doing it and getting more and more sophisticated about it. And then uh, met my wife, or now my wife, uh, Christina, in 2002. And, uh, and we've actually been brewing together uh, ever since. Okay, cool. Uh, but for us, the big, um, I guess the big uh, change or catalyst maybe for, for starting this business, it's something we've thought about for a long time. But what we ended up doing is in 2015, uh, we uh, we quit our jobs uh, here in, in Copenhagen. Uh, we'd had you know 15 year careers in, in different things, uh, and and decided just to travel uh, yeah. for a year. Uh, and, and we did a lot of things on that trip. But but one of the things we did was kind of pursue this interest in beer and brewing. So we visited okay. uh, yeah 44 different breweries all around the world, yeah. uh, meeting brewers, uh, working on recipes, and drinking a lot of beer. <laughs> <laughs> Idea of drinking beer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, cool. So so why did you take the step to start your own? You know, I think it's it's something we thought about for a long time and probably talked about a lot, yeah. you know, over some beers. I think we have friends now that tell remind me that I was talking about this, you know, 15 years ago or something, okay. right? But I think we just never we knew we wanted to do something but didn't know what it should be exactly. Like oh, what kind of then. Yeah, okay. Exactly, right? We just didn't know how it yeah, there's so many different ways you can have a brewery or work with beer, I guess, right? Yeah. yeah. But we um It was partly this trip, I think, like seeing what what we did by visiting all these brew pubs and breweries around the world is see all these different ways you can like manifest a beer business, right? And, yeah. and see what was cool about the different ones and, and then just decided, you know, this kind of, the vision for this kind of crystallized, right? And then it made sense, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So what you have now is a, is a brew pub and a bottle shop in another location? Yeah, exactly. So uh, after so it was uh, November of last year, we opened the bottle shop. So that was sort of our big expansion. Yeah. Uh, and what we did is we moved some of our production over there. So we actually make ciders on location at the bottle shop, uh, and we kept all the beer production here. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the two places now. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And why the name? Because that, uh, yeah. It struck me as an art for a brewery to call it bicycle brewery. It's a good question. We get sometimes I've gotten asked like if it's a bike shop or you know yeah. people. <laughs> but the story behind that is uh, is actually there's a photograph we have on the wall here uh, that's a, a short john bike. Where we where, when we were first getting started, we made this uh, box where you could serve two small kegs, you know, from directly from the bike. Okay. It was pretty simple, but a lot of fun. You know, we took it to Felle and to yeah. friends' places and, yeah. and served our beer that way. Uh, and then we just were thinking, you know, bicycling, Copenhagen, sort of cycling culture. Yeah. Yeah. It the seemed cycling like... cycling capital of the world. <laughs> totally, right? So yeah. it seemed like a super nice fit. And then what we did is we kind of doubled down on that concept. And we had a couple of uh, really cool, like, custom bikes made for us that we can yeah. serve and transport beer. So we have one that's sort of like a transport truck. It has uh, actually four wheels, but it can carry 250 kilos of kegs and equipment okay. and whatever. Uh, yeah. So we take that all over the city. Uh, and then we have another one that uh, is built around, it's actually a solar panel uh, powers refrigeration with a, a tap tower like oh, this. Yeah. And so we can serve beer at like festivals and parties and stuff. So, okay. so we kind of like expanded on the idea. Concept, uh, on uh, that concept, okay, that's cool. Was it hard to get started? Was yeah. it a long process? Yeah, you know, that's a good question. Hard. It was a lot of a lot of hours and a lot of new things to learn, right? And of course yeah. with this kind of business, also with other food businesses and things, but there are a lot of there's a lot of, you know, regulations and permits that one has to have. Yeah. You know, the permit for having this activity in this location, uh, you know, tax, uh, FUVA, 
uh, all these different things. And so, so of course, lear- navigating and learning. But, yeah. but you know, in most cases, I would say it wasn't really difficult. Like a lot of the authorities that I've worked with, they're actually pretty easy to contact. Uh, you can ask questions. And they were helpful. I mean, totally. Yeah, yeah. And I don't know what I expected, <laughs> but but I was actually sort of pleasantly surprised that, that okay. it seemed like the goal was to help us do it right, yeah. not to sort of punish us for doing it wrong, if you know okay. what I mean. Yeah. And at least I found with some of those things, I, this was the first time uh, for, for doing some of that. Uh, and and I found that, you know, as long as we tried, uh, you know, tried our best and were professional about it, yeah. then the outcome was okay, was was good. You know, it yeah. wasn't it wasn't that you had to know some secrets uh, that, no. you know, that you couldn't find out. Uh, okay. Yeah. yeah. So that actually was okay. But, but then again, of course, all the work that went into this, I mean, it was like a million tiny steps over yeah. a, a long period yeah. of time. Uh, and I think some businesses, you know, maybe... Some businesses start where someone just, you know, borrows a lot of money and just, you know, makes a big thing. Yeah. But but for us, it was very like lots of little steps. Uh, steps. Yeah. yeah. So it, t- it took time. Yeah. What sets you apart from other brew pubs and small breweries, and what's special about Bicycle Brewing? It's a good. Uh, it's a good question. I think what's uh, what's fun about us, and of course, it's true for other small breweries. But but what we are is we we are truly like the smallest uh, brew pub like this in Copenhagen. Maybe not in Denmark. I don't know, but 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 I think. And what's fun about that is is being so close to the production. Yeah, and we're lucky. Yeah, yeah. Actually, it's <laughs> one and a half meter. <laughs> yeah. Exactly, and we're and we're literally you know working in there. You know, I, I told you brewing twice this week uh, yeah. here, and, and so people really get to see that. Of course, these days, I mean, it's a good day to to like beer in Copenhagen. I mean, there are a lot there are a lot of great breweries, and there's a lot of fresh beer being made. Uh, yeah. But so I guess, and that's true of a lot of uh, us smaller craft breweries that that freshness is sort of super key. But but that is definitely a thing that that we do here, right? And certain styles uh, we like to make. You know, a lot of the IPAs we make and stuff they, they hugely benefit from being super fresh. Super fresh. Yeah. 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 And we and I guess also with the small batch nothing sits around for very long you know we, we make a, a 200 liter batch of beer and it sells within a hand you know a few weeks right so everything yeah. is being drank almost at like perfect freshness and, yeah. and i think that's a that makes us that kind of focus you know and, and really focusing on uh, i guess wanting to make the absolute best beer we can so yeah. we don't we don't think about ingredient cost you know we buy the best stuff we can to make yeah. the best beer we can yeah cool yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah so what's your motivation for keep doing this because i guess the hours and uh it's not a nine to five job. Yeah, yeah, I've been thinking about that. You know, it's funny because I, I really enjoy it, right? And so I don't think of it as work maybe, but yeah. but it is a lot of hours. And in the first year, you know, the first year we were open, uh, we're still open three nights a week here at the brew pub. But the first year at least, I worked all the shifts at the bar and I worked probably 50 hours doing everything else. And so, yeah. I mean, it was it was pretty crazy, you know, yeah. Yeah. And, and exhausting, you know? Yeah. Uh, but but luckily uh, over time, you know, as we've gotten we've grown a little bit now, we have a small team, and so other people uh, help with things. That gives me more time to do new things, maybe. Or yeah. that's also how we got to the bottle shop, right? It's like you yeah. have to have time to think of what you want to do next. Yeah. If you're too busy doing what you do every day, you can get kind of a uh, kind of stuck. But uh, but yeah, I like it. It's a lot of work, but I guess when you you know yeah when you love doing it, it's it doesn't not feel really work. Yeah, it doesn't feel that way, right? No. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so what kind of beers are you brewing? What's so, your specialty? Yeah, we, you know, one thing we've done, you know, as a brew pub, I, I really wanted to, you know, make a lot of different kinds of beers that are they're sort of drinkable it is a general category, right? So we make, we definitely make some, some sort of, we use some exotic ingredients, we make some unusual beer styles, uh, but we often like to make beers that people will, uh, rather than having a beer and saying, wow, that's interesting. We want someone to have a beer and say, wow, can, can I have another glass, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, but we make, a, over the three years, it's been fun to actually experiment as a brewer. So we've made a lot of different styles. I think we're on our sort of batch 115 now, and you know, more than half of those have been unique beers, right? And, and okay. a lot of different styles. Yeah. But in terms of what we specialize in, I would say uh, it's it's largely you know we focus a lot on IPAs, uh, all different types, you know, everything from black IPAs to double New England style IPAs. Yeah. But what's fun about that style for us is it helps, I think, show off what small breweries can do best, you know? Uh, and it's where we shine a little yeah. bit. Yeah. And there's so many varieties within IPAs, so yeah. Totally right, yeah, yeah to- totally. And, and so, so that I think is really fun. There's also a lot of demand for it. Yeah. Uh, it's and a like, trend right now, right? Yeah. Exactly, and a big yeah. trend for it has been for a long time. Yeah. But because freshness is so important for those mm-hmm. beers, one freshness uh, with our production, but also we can do some techniques for how we use hops, you know, in the brewing process that maybe larger breweries don't do, or it, it's not no, as you, you know. You 
Carlsberg can't really do the same. Uh, yeah. They can make great beer, but they can't make like you can here. Yeah, exactly. With the hops and everything. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Right. So that seems like a good way for us to focus. But then we also make, you know, makes. I really like, uh, you know, dark beers myself. So we sort yeah. of always are making sort of stouts and porters of different types. Yeah. Uh, we make some seasonal beers, you know, Christmas beers. Uh, we also make some fruit sours, uh, lagers, and, and pilsners of different kinds. So we are. We sort of like to do everything. Yeah. But there's certain things we I think we really do best, yeah. and that's probably the IPAs, maybe some of the fruit sours, and maybe some of the, the yeah. dark beers. But yeah, yeah. cool. How do you develop your recipes? How do you come up with new beers? Um, yeah. Yeah, you know, part of it is just having been a home brewer for, you know, whatever, 20 years almost before this. It's a, I've tried a lot of things, you know? Yeah. And maybe like uh, you too, you know, you, you build up sort of, uh, you slowly work on a recipe, you try changing this or that or something else, and sort of incrementally, and eventually you find out you've actually tried a lot of different ingredients in different combinations, yeah. right? So typically what we do is, at least when we're making a new beer, you know, we, sort of, we obviously start from the style and we think about some of the, 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 you know, the main things that would define that style. And then we use this, uh, you know, this knowledge from past beers to, yeah, to make something new. Yeah. But even the beers, there are some beers we really like where we sort of have a core recipe, but even that we change almost every time. And, okay. th and that's mo in some small, not necessarily in a big way, no. but like a small way, just yeah. because that's interesting to us. Yeah. And I think also fun for people. So maybe we have a beer where we just sort of change the main hop each time. Everything yeah. else stays constant, but the, the main hop in the beer will change. Yeah. And then, yeah. Yeah. So, so do people notice that or is it only you? <laughs> <laughs> I think, you know, sometimes it's only me. And I think the funny thing with some of these beers is when you have, since there might be two or three months between them, yeah. even people that come and eat you know, regularly and have them, yeah, I don't know if with two months distant, you can remember the difference, right? No, uh, no. So it's a little hard, but we did do one thing, actually a more immediate experiment. We made one uh, kind of a hazy IPA where we actually dry hopped it in the kegs with seven different hops. Yeah. So we actually had seven different versions of the same exact beer and they ended up fairly different. And yeah. that was an interesting way that people could really experience what that hop you know, maybe this hops a little bit more, you know, the certain, you know, fruit, uh, this one, the tiny bit of grassy, we used a uh, Sriracha Ace in one of them, okay. uh, which definitely has a bit of a grassy-ness uh, to it, but in yeah. a nice, it came out in a nice way in this particular beer. And yeah. so, uh, so that was kind of fun. Yeah. 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 That's a cool experiment. What defines a good beer in your mind? Well, I think, you know, I mean, basically, I guess to be a good beer, I and mean, there's certain sort of technical sort of brewing things one has to do right to yeah. get to just get a good beer, right? Uh, yeah. For sure, right? So, so, so um, and, and then... Right I, amount of yeast, temperature, and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. precisely. So you yeah. don't end up with something that's just off. You know, you can immediately taste if a beer has gone wrong in some yeah. way, either from the technical brewing process or, or something that hasn't been kept clean or, or whatever, yeah. right? Um, but then I think for me, it's a lot... Uh, you know, we like to do things in sort of nicely balanced. You know, I like using interesting, unusual sometimes ingredients, but I like to kind of keep things in a nice balance, again, for that sort of drinkability. So for me, like a really good beer often is one that isn't a beer that necessarily like, yeah. I like those two. I mean, brewer breweries these days are making all kinds of cool, crazy stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I kind of like a beer maybe that just has, you know, you, you want to go back for a se second sip to yeah. taste something in it, right? Yeah. Uh, so it's more balanced and uh, yeah. And maybe subtle, some, some not subtle, but like somewhat subtle versus uh, things that just, uh, I guess, hit you over the, the head. Yeah, uh, those are interesting too, but when you try once and then you try another one. Yeah, you know, that's maybe- don't go yeah. for the same. Yeah. yeah, it's maybe like a tasting experience, which can be yeah. super interesting. Yeah. And, but it is, I mean, it's also a super fun time for brewing in the sense that, uh, I mean, there's a lot of breweries sort of pushing the limits. Yeah, you know, and and people yeah. are open-minded. They yeah. want to try new things. And because uh, yeah. like 15 years ago, it was too more classic and that's, that's a, <laughs> That's a special kind of beer, but today it's, it's yeah, craft brewing is is really it's really risen up and, and people are open minded to it. I think. To yeah. Totally, and obviously you 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 witnessed it more than me, but I did first visit Copenhagen, I guess in two thousand three, yeah. and I feel like I've just seen this entire transformation. You know what yeah, I mean? And the whole culture just evolved. Yeah. yeah, it's I mean it's really great, and I think yeah. also a part of that evolution in some of the early kind of pioneers or front runners or whatever it's also made it possible for the rest of us to exist yeah maybe. exactly like, like Mikula yeah, and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah yeah exactly like, yeah. i wonder if maybe we could have but i wonder if we could really have existed 15 years ago we couldn't have been the first you know we yeah. have to be in a place where people know something about what we're doing and yeah. appreciate it right yeah. uh, that makes it a lot uh, a lot easier yeah. right yeah. yeah i think so too yeah so can you take us really quick through a typical brew day yeah 
So we uh, we typically start um, fairly early in the morning, uh, so maybe around seven o'clock in the morning, and wrap up usually around three o'clock in the afternoon. So it's a full day, right? Uh, yeah. Maybe similar to roughly to how, how long you spend. Uh, also, yeah. Yeah. Um, but what we do is uh, we have the uh, the Spidel uh, Brownmeister in the back there, uh, two hundred liters. Fill that up uh, with water, then we add the uh, the milled uh, grain, and we go through the mashing process. Uh, then we uh, boil the beer, uh, add the hops, uh, cool it down. We actually cool everything down in the Brownmeister. It has a double wall, uh, yeah. so it actually allows okay. for cooling that way. That process is a little bit slow, but because we've uh, put the lid on and like sanitized uh, everything with steam just a minute or two before the end of the boil, yeah. it's actually a perfectly uh, good way for us to do it. Uh, yeah. And then we uh, pump everything uh, into one of our fermentation tanks. Uh, we have four, two larger and two smaller. It depends a little bit if we're making sort of a higher ABV beer, we use the smaller tanks, we make a smaller batch. Uh, if we're yeah. producing sort of more like around 6% or lower, we can make a roughly 200 liter batch. Yeah. And then of course, uh, as you know, you know, there's a, there's, there's a fair amount of prep and cleanup, which I guess I sort of skipped yeah. over that part, uh, <laughs> but that's the other big, big part of the day. Yeah. But typically what I do here, um, because there are obviously some down times, I sort of set everything up here to be done by one person. Yeah. So it really only takes, there's only really space for one person and it, can, and it really only needs one person, but there's a lot of downtime. And then what I can typically do is either do something else. I mean, sometimes, uh, you know, just work on other elements of the business uh, or, or potentially, you know, you could keg, keg yeah. another beer uh, yeah. during some of the time. So there's ways we can keep busy. Yeah. 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 Cool. Um, so what do you do with your water? Because the water in Copenhagen is pretty harsh. It's hard. Uh, do you have some filtering system or, or what do you do with your water? Yeah, good question. So we, uh, we, yeah, we, we exactly the same. Anyone who lives in Copenhagen totally knows that it's a, it's super like a full of cal yeah. correct, calcium, magnesium, other things. I mean, it's great water, but it just has a ton of minerals in it, right? Yeah. Which is not ideal for certain uh, beer styles in particular. Uh, but what we do is I like the idea of using the water as sort of a local resource. So what we do is we have it tested on a regular basis because yeah. The city, what you can actually get reports from uh, yeah. the city on, on what's in the water, but the problem we have is we're actually fed by two different reservoirs. I found out. Okay. So it's so yeah, they can't tell you exactly because it's no. a blend. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So we just have to have it tested by a lab uh, once in a while, right? Yeah. And so then we know exactly what's in it, and then what we do is sort of build on that. So then we adjust the water profile for each individual beer based on the starting point. And if it should be a beer where simply some of those uh, minerals are, are just too much, then we will filter, uh, reverse osmosis filter, okay. some or all of the water yeah. in order to deal with that. Yeah. Uh, but uh, but basically, yeah, we try to use it mostly when we can and then filter when, yeah. when okay. needed. Right? Cool. Yeah. What's your best seller? What, uh, yeah, both here and in the bottle shop? It's an interesting point. I think, you know, here at the, what I've seen over the few years, uh, you know, typically sort of different IPAs and maybe lighter beers sell the most in the bar, right? Uh, and then the darker beers uh, last a little longer. Uh, and I think that just reflects the, the general taste of the sort of average person a little bit, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, I find a little bit interesting with now having the shop and selling more things in bottles that, that, you know, what people I think sometimes look for in bottles might be a little different than what they uh, look for in a bar. Yeah. And that's maybe kind of obvious, but- So uh, it's yeah. darker beers in the bottle shop or heavier well, beers or- sometimes. I think the time with the bottle shop, you know, we often get people that like, also because, you know, we package our beers in, in large bottles. So I think sometimes people are um, maybe looking for something sort of special or something maybe a little more unusual or they're bringing something uh, as a host gift yeah. or they're yeah. coming or it's, a, or it's a gift for somebody. Yeah. So definitely uh, still IPAs, but then sometimes slightly more, I think, more, some of our more expensive, experimental beers, I should say, yeah. maybe are more interesting to people in bottles, because that's sort of a different way people are are getting the beer and sharing mm. the beer yeah. uh, than, than as much at the, the yeah. bar. Okay. But uh, but yeah, I would say, but IPA is almost for sure the, the yeah. top seller, and then probably lighter beers like a Pilsner or other kinds of lagers. Yeah. Um, but, but some of the beers people love most, you know, or like the most, what do you call it? it, it vocal feedback people give you know, can often be for some of our fruit sours and stuff like this okay. yeah. which, which are super fun beers for the people that like them yeah. but but for people that aren't really don't know them so well then it's a little bit uh, yeah too much yeah yeah yeah, yeah. So. yeah. okay um who's your brewing idol oh that's a good question you know i don't know if I, that's hard for me to answer but you know for me my influence i guess a lot comes from so i grew up in california uh, near san francisco yeah and so for me i don't exactly remember it because it was right around i guess when i was uh, 
get it, you know, when I was born. But this, there was this whole, I guess, the transformation of the American craft brewing scene yeah. with some of the first what we call like modern American IPAs uh, getting brewed like in the 80s, uh, late 70s, 80s uh, in California or in the West Coast. Yeah. And, and a lot of those influence when I did become a beer drinker, you know, when I was old enough to drink or maybe a little bit before <laughs> <laughs> in the U.S., you know, there were things like uh, we had, you know, this was the was, you know, Anchor Liberty Ale. There was a uh, Sierra Nevada Pale Ale, yeah. you know, classic uh, yeah, Pale classic, Ale. Classic, yeah. yeah, made yeah. with a Cascade, I, I I think right yeah. and, and so a lot of those beers influenced when i and then you know then they started getting more and more bitter more and more hoppy you know yeah. and, and that's uh that really sort of influenced me as a you know a, a, you know yeah. initial beer drinker right and, and brewer and so some of those breweries i still to look to of course beers changed a ton and then in, at least in the ipa world then there was the uh, east coast you know new england yeah. style that yeah. came crashing in right and yeah. so uh so that's been super fun to see too but yeah. uh, but, but definitely my influence was sort of from that uh from where i started uh, yeah are you still using a lot of uh, American hops, or are you? We do, you know, especially for IPAs, a lot. You know, there's yeah. also some varieties that we like a lot that are, you know, maybe Australian or New Zealand okay. to some degree. Yeah, yeah. We made an IPA recently where we used a South African hop variety, um, yeah. but a lot of the big ones we use that we really like are Ameri yeah, are American uh, American hops. So yeah. Then, yeah, yeah. So, what's your favorite brewery? Uh, also, a good, a tough question. Yeah, I don't know. You know, I like, uh, for me, I like trying different beers. And, you know, we visit a lot of different places. We did also on that trip I mentioned, yeah. right? So it's hard to pick out, a, a, you know, a, a favorite. But here in Copenhagen, you know, what we what we go to when we don't come here, you know, I uh, we go over to Boos. Uh, we also go to Warpigs. Uh, yeah. Those are beers I like uh, in the city. Of course, there's also Ama, Ama Brukus. Uh, yeah. So we're lucky to have a bunch of, uh, of good ones uh, yeah. right here. But, yeah, uh, yeah there are many great players. Uh, so what are, what is the next step for you? You know, what I'd, what I'd like to do is we've sort of reached, we definitely reached the capacity of what we can sort of produce for the two places we have here. And I think the core of what we're doing is these, these places and people's experience at them. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that's great and we want to keep that. Uh, but I also like potentially the idea of uh, beginning to, you know, partner or work with some other, you know, potentially local restaurants or, or local uh, or the local shops or the local bars. Uh, but to be able to do that, we have to change something or find a way to produce at a larger volume. So we're looking into some ways of doing that. And I don't know exactly how that will, will work. And, and obviously, my focus still is 100% on this. Yeah. But um, but that would be a nice next step. And it's not the goal to become like huge, but no. just I think it would be cool. You know, we know a lot of other, you know, we know some of the local restaurant owners. And I think it'd be super cool. And they're interested in having like a local yeah. Ustubo beer. To keep it local. And, yeah. 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 Uh, that'd be awesome. So I think that would be a lot of fun. So that yeah. could be a, a potential next step for us. Yeah. Cool. Should we go look at the bottle shop? Yeah, that sounds like a great idea. Yeah, cool. Let's do cool. that. All right. So Alex, last question. Can you tell us something about the bottle shop that we're in now? Yeah, definitely. Uh, so we uh, we opened this place, uh, I guess sort of right in the middle of Corona, but last uh, November. Uh, and the idea here is, it's obviously an expansion from, from the brewery uh, around the corner, but what we do here is we produce cider. So we're making a whole variety of uh, different different types of apple cider, uh, also pear and also black currant, and also sometimes using some other fruit, like making uh, you know red berries and apple, uh, different things. And then we're open uh, as a shop uh, during the day yeah. where we sell um, both our own beer in yeah. bottles and then some other local, mostly local uh, producers of you know, beer, cider, yeah. wine. Cool. Well, thanks for your time and uh, thanks for your interview. Yeah, my pleasure. It was yeah. a lot of fun. Cool. Tak for at du lyttede med på podcasten Øl og mennesker fra Beer Stories. Hop gerne ind på YouTube kanalen Beer Stories for at se flere interviews eller instruktionsfilm om ølbrygningen og tips omkring øl generelt. Følg også bloggen Beer Stories på Facebook og Instagram.